Adventures of Sonic Episode 58, The Robot Robot. Oh, hopefully this will be a good episode. The name's giving me hope. I'm still steaming from that last episode. At least the OC kids we start out seeing are entertaining because of their bike tricks. Why was there a Robotnik billboard and nobody destroyed it? Or at least graffitied it? The town implodes, looking like it was formed into a ball. And Sonic shows up by sheer coincidence again. Seriously, how does he always manage to show up exactly in the right place to witness the start of Robotnik's plans? That's ridiculous. He doesn't have an Uncle Chuck or a hacker to listen into Robotnik's plans and learn about them. And there's no implication that Robotnik succeeds in most of his plans because Sonic happens to not be there and you can't save everyone. Robotnik shows off his town imploder. Whoa, that's mean! I guess he plans to use it to force Mobius to obey him out of threat. Yep. And he shows off the power source for it, the Blammo. Why does he just leave the Blammo alone with the robots? It's almost dropped on the floor, and he says the slightest jiggle could blow up him, and possibly the whole planet. Why did Robotnik not just put the Blammo, which is supposed to be a power source, in the machine and keep anyone from touching it? Why did he put it down in front of them? Since Robotnik says even an idiot could make better servants, Scratch and Grounder decide to make a robot to abuse of their own. And they look forward to being evil to it, but they also say they're going to be parents. We're going to be parents! That shows how messed up their own parent is. Sonic gives the kids chocolate eggs, and he wants to wait for the villain to make a mistake, as that's their only hope. Grounder loses his nose near the machine that automatically makes the robot, which has parts from both of them. Grounder and Scratch argue over which name to give the robot, which is kind of cute actually, since it's small. It makes cute, weird noises and stuff. It's still nice that Scratch calls Snookums son. At least he's trying harder than Robotnik. Snookums puts away the dishes, and in his bitterness he overloads the plate holder, making it explode and destroy the plate. Why didn't the robot machine maker program robots to appreciate doing their jobs instead of being angry about it? Robotnik says he should personally turn Snookums into a popcorn popper, causing him to run away, and he plans to go back to bed for the night. Snookums plans to run away, and he took the Blamo with him because bullshit lazy writing. I mean, how could he possibly get the idea to take it away? How would he know what it is? Why did he take off and not Scratch and Grounder? Scratch and Grounder made a smarter robot than themselves. Sonic sees an ad in the morning newspaper he somehow has, which is a missing persons report sent out by Scratch and Grounder, warning everyone about the Blammo that could implode the whole planet. Why didn't Robotnik just design the Blammo better? Snowdust makes me feel bad for him again because he remembers Robotnik's threat, and he breaks through the mountain. Sonic arrogantly stops for a second to consider how he'll catch up to him, since there's so many different ways, and Scratch chases him as he starts running towards him and falling off a cliff. Well, kind of running, he has a wheel. Scratch says that if he hits the bottom, the Blamo will explode, and Sonic magically defies gravity to run down the upright wall of the canyon to safely get to the bottom, and he creates a geyser to slow his fall and send him back to safety by spin dashing in the ground. Why is Sonic smiling about Snookum still having the Blamo? He says Boo to scare his scratching grounder into falling off the cliff. Grounder showed it could fly earlier, but he is an idiot. Maybe he forgot he could. Or his flyer is broken. They're simply days after that, and Scratch thinks they should warn Robotnik, who finds out the Blamo's gone missing. Again, that's his own fault for not putting the Blamo in the battery compartment and locking it up tight. Why would he put it on the machine out in the open? This whole plot falls apart. I wish they call the robot by his name again. I already forgot his name and he doesn't talk to tell me it. I'm only saying Snookums because it's post-script and I know his name now. The bike trick kids hear Snookums crying. I feel bad for him and I really like him, so it's a shame that I forgot his name when I was watching the episode. He was going to be called Scratch too, so I was wondering if I should just call him that? The kids are nice to him and he gives them the photo of his parents. When did they take that? He's offended that they're called ugly, which is sweet, and the kids determine that he misses them. He's briefly scared of Sonic and shows Sonic the Blamo. It's sweet that Sonic calls him Kiddo. Can we borrow that Kiddo? Because bullshit, he arbitrarily is made to throw the Blamo instead of giving it to him gently, 
all to force Robotnik to get a hold of it. It's never explained that he doesn't trust Sonic not to misuse the Blemo for evil purposes and throws it away from him in fear. So that's just fanon, and it's the only way this can make sense. Robotnik and Sonic go to a volcano with Robotnik using Dykmobile, and Sonic feels hot and coughs from the convection of the lava, unlike last time he was near it. It's only temporary, though. Snookums joins Sonic and sprays water, which somehow saves him. So he wasn't scared of Sonic? Why is he with Sonic now? Why do he throw the blammo instead of handing it to him gently like he was clearly told to if he trusts him? Sonic ends up in an icy location, and Spin dashes in a circle to send robots into the water. He arbitrarily isn't fast enough to get into Eggman's fortress before the door can close. That's one fast closing door. It closes up faster than sound. Then Snuggums opens the door to let Sonic in, which is much better writing than Sonic disguising himself. He gets Scratch and Grounder to beg Robotnik not to implode Snuggums. Wait, that was his name? I thought Scratch was calling him Scratch too. Sonic randomly spins to get himself a mad scientist disguise and mashes buttons on the machine while speaking in techno babble he shouldn't know, which causes the city to return to normal and the fortress to implode. Why is Robotnik confused about why the machine isn't working when he should be able to hear Sonic just fine? The robot decides not to be with Scratch, and Sonic decides to bring him to Scrap Valley, the home for defective robots, where they understand his language. Okay, and coming back for just a very small amount of time in an ending wasn't what I had in mind. My point still stands that the village was never really used much, even if it did show up for a microsecond in a cameo. It should have been the knothole of the show. And the Sonic Says message is about not standing around in a building during a fire. You'd think that would have been common sense. The show thinks we're idiots. Well, I gotta give the episode some credit because I really liked Snookums. He acted like I would expect any normal person to after being made a free will robot who's expected to work for Scratch and Grounder. He naturally hates it and gets scared of Robotnik and runs away. You'd think an automatic robot maker would program its robots to be incapable of making that decision, which is the only reason Scratch and Grounder wouldn't run away as well. The whole plot falls apart because Robotnik should have kept the implode machine's power source locked away in its battery compartment, not out in the open where any robot can arbitrarily take it for no reason and threaten the whole world with implosion by accident. The whole source of tension was artificial. Why would he take that away? There's no reason for it. A different villain could have done it for his own reasons. It's good that it's explained where Snookums goes after this episode, as the defective robot village is brought back, but shows up again for such a small, unsatisfying amount of time. This should have been making a lot more appearances. This should have been the show's knothole. But bad writing aside, I was still very impressed that Scratch's robot ended up being such a likable character being smarter and way more sympathetic than him.